Welcome back to the Crypto Teacher. And guys, I'm just coming back with this second video. I know I got a lot of uh, comments and emails about the IMF video that came out. Just to let you know that IMF video is two years old. So I'm just going over the reasons why they actually uh, let that launch. Now, guys, don't forget, uh, basically, I talk about Libra, JP Morgan a lot because the fact is, is that they're doing business behind the curtain. Uh, of course, we have the currencies that we look at, Bitcoin, XRP, Ethereum, but there are also projects that are being worked on behind the scenes. And the fact is that basically they want to go to a payment system where it is zero. Now you're asking, if it's payment going to zero, what's in it for them? Because guys, the system is not for you. This system is for the robots and automation. That's what this system is for. That's what we're moving over to. That robot is going to tell you to get back to work, guys. This system is not for you. This digital economy is not for you. You're going to start it. The robots and automation is going to finish it. Now, guys, don't forget I've been over Starlink by Elon Musk, SpaceX, and then also the Kuiper constellation by Jeff Bezos. Those satellites will ensure that the robots, the automation will never, ever be without 5G Internet. But you guys enjoy the video and have a great day. When we buy or sell things, the payment is usually processed by a bank or credit card company. Problem number one, the companies often take a cut of the transaction. Two, we have to trust these companies to protect our sensitive data from hackers. Three, most international payments take a long time and are expensive. To solve these problems, we could use a special currency that is secure and based on the science of cryptography, which is a way of protecting information using mathematics. This special type of currency is called a cryptocurrency and only exists in computer networks. When you send someone this special currency, the money goes directly to them, removing the middleman. And at the same time, the transaction is broadcast to the entire network and recorded in a permanent way, which means it's almost impossible to fool the system. Costs of making payments are lower, transactions are faster, especially across countries, and even those people around the globe who don't have bank accounts can buy or sell goods and participate in the global economy. However, there are some risks. The transactions in most cryptocurrencies are anonymous. Some cryptocurrencies can even be untraceable. This can make it easier for the bad guys to make payments without being noticed. If you lose your password, you could lose all your money. At the moment, cryptocurrencies are highly volatile. They can't process large amounts of transactions quickly yet, and they're not even widely accepted. But if we can counter the risks, then this new technology, or some variation of it, can completely change the way we sell, buy, save, invest, and pay our bills. And who knows, this could be the next step in the evolution of money. Agree. Any of those who are not interested over there who are making too much noise, please go away. <laughs> <laughs> so first thing on which we will probably all agree is that cash usage is decreasing in many places. If you look at Sweden, for instance, only 13%, one three, of transactions are settled in cash. Second principle, which I think we will agree on, Prevalent use of smartphones has spurred the growth of digital currency, often exchanged without the intermediary of banks. The role of banks as providers of payment services is being challenged, and banks are going to have to adapt to survive or possibly disappear. One fact that I'm sure Sarah will be commenting upon, JP Morgan Chase launched JP or JPM but we all know what it is, JP Morgan, COIN, a digital token that will be used to instantly settle transactions between clients of its wholesale payments business. And uh, competition makes us better. And as long as we are solving problems for customers and that solve an issue, 
we believe that makes sense. And so in the case of what Patrick discussed, actually, there was a void, and that void got filled, and then that void got regulated, which, may, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, from our point of view, in, we're in the US, a very mature market where uh, there is 22% of cash still, but that's much less than, for example, China, where you have about twice that. Yeah. Um, you have uh, a very mature infrastructure at the point of sale, which didn't exist, for example, in China and other places. And um, therefore, you have the credit cards uh, and the debit cards, which together represent 72% of uh, the changes. And that, from the, point, from the point of view of the customer, is valuable, is trusted, valuable because of the rewards, is trusted and is immediate. And what we've done, though, is we have said, okay, Venmo, for example, um, let's compete with it. So as an industry, we launched a consortium amongst banks. And in fact, we are twice as big as Venmo. So Venmo would be um, about uh, $65 billion, and uh, this would be about twice as big. JP Morgan is just themselves bigger than Venmo. So actually, the incumbent is using the exact same thing because social is important, because um, we need to actually provide that P2P, but we're doing with the security of the banking system. The JPM coin is uh, something that we're doing on the wholesale side. So on the wholesale side, there is already the immediate payments, um, $300 billion, for example, on uh, SWIFT GPI, which is how wholesale, $300 billion a day, and half of that is already happening in less than half of an hour. So that's already happening, um, and that's happening uh, with 1,100 co corridors, so that would be uh, from one place to another uh, or in the world, and that's with uh, hundreds of uh, countries. So this is all happening, but what we decided to do is to say, okay, there is still a pain point, and it's the last mile, which is that to do KYC AML, and to do it correctly, sometimes the information KYC stops. KYC AML, oh, know sorry. your customer, anti-money laundering. Know your customer, and uh, really making sure that the good actor and only the good actors can transact. And so we obviously need to do that, um, and we support doing it. When we do it, 50% of the time, it checks green immediately and there is no problem. But there is also the case where we absolutely need to have a more efficient way to have the information uh, move. Mm. So again, we went to technology, and the, distributor, the distributed ledger is actually a great technology for that because we can put information on the ledger mm -hmm. so that we can clear that this is a good actor and this is a good transaction mm -hmm. immediately instead of through phone calls, emails, and the old way the correspondent banks were trying to do that internationally. And so right now what we've done is we have separated the information network, IIN, from the uh, movement of the currency on SWIFT, which is already working at scale at $300 billion. Mm -hmm. We are also doing an innovation of this JPM coin where we're saying if we did them together, backed by US dollars, on the ledger, would that make sense? We are certainly open to doing it, but it's in addition to scale solutions that are already working in hundreds of billions of dollars. Uh, that's the first thing. Second thing is to provide some elements of the infrastructure that are better provided uh, by us, that are, let's say, the backbones of the system. So we do uh, real-time gross settlement, for instance, that mm -hmm. has been the backbone of the system. We now do TIPS, which you mentioned, which is uh, instant payments for the, for the whole of Europe. And we, for any, cons any consumer, any, anybody having? Anyone can access it either through the banks or indirectly. Uh, and there are already talks of, uh, for instance, in the UK, which has a similar system. Uh, the system can be extended to non-banks. So that's certainly very much part of the discussion whether uh, and when it should be extended to non-banks. Mm -hmm. uh, and think about the cost. Think about the cost. Uh, we charge, as ECB, we charge 0 0.2 cent per transaction, which is one euro makes for 500 transactions, uh, which helps understand why some banks don't want to talk about it. I'm going when to interrupt you, you for a right? microsecond. Mr. Disruptor, what do you think of that? 0 0.2 cent of a euro for any transaction? Yeah, I mean, I, uh, our, our thesis is that um, when you move fiat money onto public blockchain networks that have you know, real scalability characteristics uh, that 
uh, effectively payments will go to zero. That there will be no business model for payments. There'll be no consumer will ever pay for anything with payments. Merchants will not pay for payments. B2B transactions, international transactions, it will go to zero just like sharing information on the internet and data is zero, sharing email is zero. All, all, it's effectively just you know, sh but sharing costs. But the ECB is on its way to zero. I think that's, that's a good improvement, but I think zero is better.